So this is section 3.5, equation solving and modeling. We're going to talk about solving exponential equations, solving logarithmic equations, orders of magnitude in logarithmic models, Newton's law of cooling, and logarithmic re-expression. So the first thing is that we can solve equations using one-to-one -one properties. So one-to-one -one properties are saying if we have something like b to the u equals b to the v, then we know that the exponents u must equal b. Same thing with logs. If we have log base b of u equals log base b of v, then we know u and v must be equivalent. So we're going to use that idea of using 1 to 1 um, to solve 40 times 1 half raised to the x over 2 equals 5. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of the 40. So I'm going to divide both sides by 40. So that's going to give me 1 half to the x over 2 equals, if I reduce 5 over 40, I get 1 eighth. Now I'm going to rewrite 1 eighth as 1 half to a power. So if we think about it, 1 eighth is just 1 half to the third power. So I can write this as 1 half to the x over 2 equals 1 half to the third power. Because 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8. So that would be 1 8. So now by our 1 to 1 properties, we know that since the bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same, which means x over 2 has to equal 3. We can multiply both sides by 2. So x equals 6. Okay, now we're going to use that same idea, except we're going to solve this log equation. So we're solving log of x to the third equals 3. So with this one, what I want to do is I want to rewrite 3 as a log. So if we think about it, log of 10 to the third power is going to equal 3. Because if we rearrange it, remember that's base 10, so 10 to the third power equals 10 to the third power. So we're going to use that idea and we're going to substitute this in for our 3 right here. So we can say log x to the third equals log 10 to the third. So that means that since these are both log base 10, oops, we can say that x to the third has to be equal to 10 to the third, so that means x equals 10. Okay? Now this next one, we're not going to use the one-to-one -one property. We're going to use properties of logs to solve this. So we have log of 2x plus 1 plus log of x plus 3 equals log of 8 minus 2x. So we're going to first step get everything onto the same side. So this would be log of 2x plus 1 plus log of x plus 3 minus log of 8 minus 2x equals 0. So using the properties of logs, I'm going to condense this into a single log. So you'll notice that we have plus right here, which means it's going to be multiplied, and we have minus, which means it's going to be divided. So this would be log of 2x plus 1 times x plus 3 divided by 8 minus 2x equals 0. So now if we switch the form, we know that it's log base 10. So it would be 10 to the 0 power equals that whole expression. Okay, so then anything to the 0 power, like 10 to the 0 power, we know is going to just turn into 1. And then we know that if we have a fraction like this, what we want to do is we want to multiply by the denominator. So we're going to multiply both sides by 8 minus 2x. So then I have 8 minus 2x, and then I'm going to multiply out the 2x plus 1 times the x plus 3. So if I multiply that out, I get 2x squared, I get 6x plus x, so it would be plus 7x plus 3. 
then I'm going to get everything onto the same side. So this would be 2x squared plus 9x if I add the 2x to both sides. And then if I subtract 8, it's going to be minus 5. Okay, so then we can factor this. I'm running out of space. Let's add a, okay. So I have 2x squared plus 9x minus 5. So we can say what multiplies to negative 10 and adds to 9. So that would be 2x squared minus 1x plus 10x minus 5. We can group. We can take out an x, and we can take out a 5. So our factors would be x plus 5 and 2x minus 1. So then our zeros would be negative 5 and positive 1 half. So now with logs, you can't take the log of a negative number. So if we go back to our original equation here, if I plug in negative 5 to any of these, I'm going to get a negative number, and I can't take the log of a negative number. So that means that negative 5 is extraneous, and so our only solution is 1 half. The other thing you can do is, so on that first step there where we rewrote this, and we solved it so that it was equal to zero, we got everything onto one side, you could actually graph this to verify your answer. So this is a picture of what the graph would look like if you subtracted the log to the other side and then graphed it, you'll see that our only solution is at one half. Okay, so orders of magnitude. Common logarithm of a positive quantity is its order of magnitude. So we think of powers of 10 um, exponential magnitude, so like a kilometer is three orders of magnitude longer than a meter, because um, we know that if we have one meter, that's 1,000, oh sorry, other way around, <laughs> one kilometer is 1,000 meters. Okay, a dollar is two orders of magnitude greater than a penny, because we know that there are 100 pennies in one dollar. Um, New York City with 8 million people is 6 orders of magnitude bigger than Earmuff Junction with a population of 8. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some real life examples of this. So one is the Richter scale. So the Richter scale magnitude of R of an earthquake is where A is the amplitude in micrometers. So that micrometers, we see written like that, of the vertical ground motion at the receiving station T is the period of the associated seismic wave in seconds, and B accounts for the weakening of the seismic wave with increasing distance from the epicenter of the earthquake. So this equation can be used um, to talk about the magnitude of an earthquake. Another example, real life example of where we use logs, so in chemistry, the acidity of a water-based solution is measured by the concentration of hydrogen ions. Um, in moles per liter. So the hydrogen ion concentration right here. So pH is negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So that's how we find the pH of a substance. So more acidic solutions have a higher hydrogen ion concentration and lower pH values. Okay, then we have Newton's law of cooling. So an object that has been heated will cool to the temperature of the medium in which it is placed. So the temperature T of the object can be modeled by this equation right here for an appropriate value of K where T sub is the temperature of the surrounding medium and T sub zero is the temperature of the object. So this model assumes that the surrounding medium maintains a constant temperature. So we are going to do a problem with this. So it says a hard boiled egg at temperature 100 degrees Celsius is placed in 15 degrees Celsius water to cool. Five minutes later, the temperature of the egg is 55 degrees Celsius. When will the egg be 25? Not C solution, next slide. We're gonna do the solution in this slide. Okay, so we know that T, the temperature of the object is 100, and we know that the temperature of the medium is 15. 
and we know that t of 5 um, minutes is equal to 55. So we're going to use this to solve and find out what k is. So we're going to use that equation in the previous slide. So we're going to say 55 is equal to 15 plus 85. So if we look back here, this right here is the temperature of the object minus the temperature of the medium. So um, 85 will be 100 minus 15, okay, e to the negative 5k. So we're solving for k. So we are going to start by subtracting 15 from both sides. That gives us 40, and then we're going to divide by 85. So that gives us 40 over 85 equals e to the negative 5k. Oops. Okay, now we want to switch the form. So this would be natural log of 40 over 85 equals negative 5k. So we can type that in the calculator, do natural log of 40 over 85, then divide both sides by negative 5, and we should get 0 0.1507 equals k. So now that we know k, we can use the equation again to find when um, our final value over here is equal to 25. So we're going to say 25 equals 15 plus 85 e to the negative 0.1507t. Why can't I fit t in there? Okay, t. So we're solving for t. So first step again, we're going to subtract the 15, which gives us 10, and divide by 85. So this would be 10 over 85 equals e to the negative 0.1507t. Okay, then we're going to switch the form. So it would be natural log of 10 over 85 equals negative 0.1507t. So we take that in the calculator, divide by negative 1. 0.1507 and we get 14.2 minutes. Okay, so that is how we can use Newton's law of cooling. So the last thing is giving some regression models. So we've talked about linear regression, we've talked about quadratic regression. Um, this is, so again, remember when you're putting regressions into Desmos, you're using y1 and approximately equal to, and then you would use your equation, but you would use x1 um, to refer back to the table that you're putting into Desmos as well. So these are just different regressions we can use for linear, natural log, exponential, and power. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.